Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Ingrid Owens here. How are you? Hope you are doing well this morning. Just give some people a minute to get on here. Uh, we are at Biz Talk Tuesday. It is, of course, Tuesday, a little later than normal at 1030. I haven't really figured out my time. Maybe 1030 is what it is. But if you are watching me live, I would love if you would write in the comments and let me know that you are watching and where you are from this morning. And maybe what you are up to this morning, what what kind of a day it is there with you, wherever you are in the world, let me know where you are. Uh, I am here in Atlanta, Georgia. And if you are watching the replay, go ahead and type hashtag replay. Thank you for catching me on the replay. And if you have any questions, as always, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. So today we are in... Um, we are at Biz Talk Tuesday and I was like, okay, this, I, I'm kind of scrambling this morning for getting this done because I had a, I had a meeting, um, this morning at nine o'clock, which my husband scheduled without me knowing. And, um, it was a little kind of chaotic, but I got through it. I got back and I'm here to do the, the call today. So I know what we're going to talk about. And um, it's got to do with last week's topic, which was all to do with fear. Hey, whoever somebody is there. Hey, Nicole, giving me a thumbs up. Um, the meeting today I will get to in a, in a bit, maybe, maybe won't. It's kind of, it was kind of crazy. But for those of you who don't know me and this is your first time watching, I'm Ingrid Owens, business coach and marketing strategist for creatives and creative entrepreneurs. So what I wanted to talk about today, um, in kind of conjunction of what we were doing with last week is talking a little bit more about fear. Now, last week we talked about fear in terms of the imposter syndrome and how how that can hold you back making progress in your business and moving forward and I totally get that hey Linda good morning good to see you this morning um, I, I yeah I just wanted to talk a little bit more about um, about fear in in another regard okay and uh, this week instead of uh, the fear that you are not uh, the person who you uh, are put presenting yourself to be we're talking about fear that you don't know what you're doing, okay? That fear that you are acting incorrectly or that you're making the wrong move. And so what I wanted to talk uh, briefly about today is that kind of fear and how that can kind of freeze us in, in action and some practical steps of how to overcome that. And I've got four practical steps that I think everybody can put into play um, to overcome this fear because fear as we have talked about last week has many guises we looked at the imposter syndrome last week which was um fear that people that people are thinking that you're so that you're i suppose it's um fear that you're presenting something that's not true to who you are um and that you are trying to be a fraud and that you're not good enough and all of the things that come with it Today, this is another fear that can hold us up. Um, and this is definitely something that I've struggled with in the past, having perfectionist tendencies, <laughs> even though I, if you were to look around, I think I've said this a hundred times. If you look around my house, I look far from a f perfectionist, but my variety of perfectionism comes from if I don't know how I'm doing it right, or if I'm not doing it perfectly, then I'm not going to do it at all. And I think a lot of creative people kind of have that attitude towards things as well. It's like they're so particular about the type of work that they do, that if it's not the very, very best and meets their very high standards, that they're not going to go put it out into the world. Excuse me, I feel like a sneeze coming out. <laughs> Excuse me. If this is something that you have um, experienced and you're watching, let me know how this has presented itself in your life and how it's hindered you from moving forward. I definitely know that it is something that I face all of the time. And even this morning as I was going into this show and because the, I got thrown off yesterday with the bank holiday, I was like, oh, I don't have a proper uh, thing planned out. Oh, maybe I should just put it off. But I was like, no. I'm committed. I said, I'm going to do these every Tuesday. So let's do it. If it's not at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, I can do it. And actually, it's quite funny because I was trying to schedule it for 11 and it showed up at 10 at, at 1030 for whatever reason. So I guess I'm more prepared than I thought. So the first thing, the first way that we can 
um, we can deal with this fear uh, that not that we're not doing what we think we should be doing or that we ought to be doing or that we're we're not doing the right thing. OK, so let me link this back. And if you haven't watched this already, I, I encourage you to do so. I'll link this back in the show as well is I have um, a, a podcast or a video show that I do with four other entrepreneurs um, called called the Amplify Your Life and Biz show. And this week's topic is all about the shoulds. Right. And all the things we should be doing. So this fear of not knowing that we're not doing it right can kind of is linked to that in a way, right? Because we're thinking about, well, I should be doing it this way or I should be doing that way or maybe I'm not doing it the right way at all and then I'm not going to do it at all because I'm not doing it the right way, whatever the right way that I should be doing it is. So I don't do the thing, right? Whether that's post on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, just putting your product out there or your services or whatever it is. There's this, as I say, the shitting all over yourself, right? That it's like all the things that we should be doing, we're not doing. We give ourselves a hard time because of that. And then we freeze in an action. So the first thing, if you suffer from this, I fear that you're not doing it right and blaming yourself because you're not doing it right. Uh, there's four things we're going to look at. So the first thing that I want to to advise you to do is for a start, look inward. OK, look inward to see what are those things that you want to be doing or that you know you should be doing at some certain level. Right. So it's easy to look out and see all of the advice that we're being given by other people. Um, to see like what what the thing all the things that we should be doing again the should right um it's such a trigger word when you hear that should it's, it's such a a thing that we need to take a lot of notice of but if we look at uh, anybody who has um the facebook stream running you'll see you know ads and if you're in the entrepreneurial space you'll see ads for you know people telling you you should be posting on facebook you should be posting on pinterest you should be doing instagram you should be doing this you should be doing that and it becomes very um it becomes very very overwhelming um it, uh, because all of the shoulds right um Linda said that she's, yeah, I'm glad you're watching. That. Let me try something here. I wanted to see if I can, um, oh, there's a, there's a feature on this that I can highlight a comment. Um, I don't know if this is doing it now or not. Maybe if you see it, I'll have to look back at the replay. Uh, there was a little thing that I can feature it and I wanted to try it when somebody posted a comment, but it doesn't matter now. But yes, Glen Linda, I'm glad you enjoy the show. There's, the girls on there are so smart and it's so good to have, um, that little community of people. For me, it's been amazing. And I know that they, they give great opinions and they have great insight on lots of different things. So getting back to my thing, fear that we're not doing the thing right. First look inward. And that's how I go approach it. Because if it doesn't feel right, then the chances are maybe, um, there is some misalignment there. So if somebody's telling you, you should be posting on Instagram, look first to see if does Instagram feel like a good place for you if it feels kind of icky and not a good place that you you don't want to be then maybe you shouldn't be doing it right so don't feel so bad about that right acknowledge that that feeling is there and just say okay that doesn't feel right for me right now so I'm not going to do that or when something feels really good and that's the better way to approach it if you're love doing Pinterest and you're you know it's easy it flows when you're on there then lean into the Pinterest thing because if that's what feels good for you right now the chances are that that's the right thing that you need to be doing and you're doing it fine if you're seeing results from that then it's fine okay so the if you feel like you're not doing it right look inward and see how it feels right do a kind of a gut check with that number one number two don't underestimate the value of planning and having a plan. So sometimes when we're trying to do things and we're really not sure if we're doing the right marketing things or not, um, it can kind of be a case of we're just trying a little bit of everything, right? And we're trying one thing and we're trying this other thing and we don't really give anything a good try right? A good stretch of time. Because, you know, um, I think the latest research is, is it, it see it takes people nine touch points to actually see and hear your message or see and hear your stuff before it actually resonates with them. Um, it used to be seven. 
um, touch points with, you know, in terms of advertising, you have to, until it actually comes in. But I think now the new, our, our brain, um, ha- hasn't got as much, like, we don't have as much attention as we used to have. So I think it's actually nine. So you can sometimes try things for a short amount of time and they're not having any traction. And you can start to think, oh, well, it's because I'm doing it wrong. I'm not doing it right. When actuality is because you haven't given it enough time. And so in order to, for you to step back from that, it's essential that you have some sort of a plan. And now at this time in the beginning of September, it's a great time to plan for the next, this final kind of um, portion of the year going forward. Because for in order for you to have a plan in October, November, December, you want to start planning now. You want to start to kind of put together the plan, look back at last the last couple of quarters. What did you do right? What worked? What didn't? And how are you going to do that and ramp it up, ramp up what works? For the last quarter and then when you have the plan it makes it hard to argue with the plan right because you're like when I was in a good frame of mind and I was in a you know looking at things logistically and strategically I was able to say okay uh, yeah I had planned to post every Tuesday on Facebook live that's something that I really enjoy doing that people have given me great feedback about. I know that I'm getting my messaging out there to people and I can reach a wide number of people that way. I'm going to do it. And not do like what I was about to do this morning because I had this meeting, which ironically was about planning with a financial planner and I didn't want to go to it and I didn't want to be back here. I couldn't be back here in time. And I was like, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show up. I'm not ready. And then I'm like, stick to the plan, Ingrid. My, thing that I have here, um, one of my things, which is, is stay the course. That's what I have to have written down in front of me all the time. Stay the course because I know the plan. I know to stick to the, I have to stick to the plan, but I have to remind myself to stay the course and stick to the plan. Okay. So the first one we talked about was looking inward, making sure that you're aligned with what it is that you're doing. The second is have a plan so that, you know, the fear bit doesn't come into play that you're not doing things right. You've got the plan. You decided it ahead of time. The third thing, of course, is always to ask an expert. If you feel like you're not doing it right, get help from an expert, somebody that you admire that is doing it right. Not that you admire, but like that you can see are doing it the way that you want to do it, right? And that is so helpful because that's going to give you the security of like, yes, it's not you. It's, you know, the thing and here's how to do the thing right. So, you know, in the past um, and, and recently, I still do teach photography and I have a lot of knowledge about the photography industry. Um, and that's kind of, um, it's a, um, it's just part of me and part of who I am. But recently I've been asked, excuse me, I could have to, uh, allergies, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, recently I've been asked to like teach like high level workshops for specific, uh, types of portraiture and lighting and all that. That's not my wheelhouse. Like I don't a, enjoy doing that. I can do it but I don't enjoy doing it. And it's not my area of expertise. There are people who are way better at doing that, that if, and if that's the help you think you need, then you should do that and, and get it done right, right? So ask the appropriate person for the appropriate help. It's so, so important to do that, to find that one person. But when you can find the person, then like follow them and stick to what they know. You can have several different people for several different things, but you know, don't have several different people telling you diff- their opinion on different uh, strategies. Like get your one Instagram person and your one Pinterest person or your one Facebook person or whatever. Um, don't try and follow like 10 different Pinterest people because everybody's going to have a different strategy. And what is really important that it is all based around you. So you kind of have to take the bits that is important and works and leave it out. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to kind of over, um, uh, you know, overemphasize the importance of following one person, an expert. Um, but I think for a lot of people, they, they need to have that. It's always nice. And it doesn't have to be somebody that's way far ahead of you. Quite often, and I find this the some of the best relationships um, uh, w- with experts or 
are people who are just a step or two ahead of you, right? That they um, know and they can remember what it was like being where you're at so that they can impart their knowledge and they can still relate. Okay. And a lot of times that can come from peers, not just, or, um, not just people, um, you know, kind of experts, trainers or whatever. Okay. So that's number three. It does. Good. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate you giving me some feedback. Um, and then the, the fourth thing, which is kind of encompasses those other three things that we've talked about, about having a plan, uh, going in and asking an expert is to use the data and not emotion. And this is the hard bit because we are emotional beings. We're human beings. We're living this experience on earth together. And we all have to go through the emotional path to things, right? But we can create story and put meaning on things that don't work, that have nothing to do with why it's not working. So to overcome this fear that we're not doing things right, I first of all, I've told you that you have to look inward and, and kind of do a gut check. And that's true. But you also have to look at the data and the facts. And so what I mean by that is you should be tracking and looking at your metrics. And if you're not, then go back and do it. Now, if you're using a business account on Instagram or Facebook or any of these platforms, which you should be doing Pinterest, they will give you the stats and the, and the actual, you know, the, the, the um, metrics of what is happening and what the engagement is like. And I would encourage you to take some time to look at those and see what they mean. Try and decipher it. Um, and try it, it really takes away the story because it's very easy. So for example, with, with, for me, I have a spreadsheet of the times that I go live, what we talked about, the response that I've gotten, the engagement that I get. I can see all this on my Facebook page, the, the engagement that I get and how many people I have relationships with in that conver and conversation with. And that continues on, right? I also track for people who, uh, I talk to on a basis that I, that I have in my network and, and then I have email and all of that, right? So I track that because it's very easy for me to say, Oh, you know, in June, Facebook live just didn't do anything. I really am not you know, I'm not feeling it anymore because like this morning, I'm not going to feel like I want to get on there. But I can look back and I can say, well, did you actually go live? Like, did, did that really, you, you said that it didn't work, but did you actually do the thing that you said you were going to do in your plan? And if you didn't, then, you know, you're, you're making a story up about it, right? I mean, I could say, well, I didn't actually do Facebook Live in June. So I didn't see any results in July because I wasn't actually really doing it. So what, 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 what gives, you know, it's not, it's not me. It's that I didn't do the thing, right? The same way if you're posting on Instagram, I, I, I Instagram's not working very well for me. Well, are you posting every day? Are you engaging every day? Are you like direct messaging people? Are you, you know, using the right hashtags? Are you changing the hashtags that you're using? Are you tracking all of that? Linda says, for me, this is the hardest thing. I have a hard time understanding what all of that means. I, I totally understand that uh, that can be hard, Linda. But if I were you, I would just commit to giving yourself, you know, put aside an hour to sit down and try and decipher it all and what it means to you. And and uh, that's something I could probably do some sort of training on. But, um, you know, you have to track the things that make sense. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're posting on, say, like Instagram, what you're trying to do out of that is to get somebody across to your store or to, you know, reach out and have a phone call or a conversation, you know? So you have to find the gap between those two things and see, is that happening? Now, it can be hard with some platforms like Instagram because, um, you're, you know, you don't know whether they're coming from there or not. I have a, a client at the minute and she was like, I got my first, um, client from Instagram and she was so excited. She's a jewelry designer. And so I was like, how did you know she came from Instagram? And she's like, well, I just asked. And of course, that's it, right? And it's one of the first questions I do uh, when I'm talking to my um, prospective clients is like, how did you find me? And it's something that you can ask if you're in that business that, you know, you have a relationship with your customers. Um, but if it's not converting to customers, you, you know, you might not have that full information yet. But you can still track things like, 
engagement, the number of, um, so for say Instagram, you can see how many people comment on your post. You can see how many people engage in your post, right? That's that side. But you can also track how many, com how many photos did I comment on? How many people did, um, did I reach out to and like their stuff? How many people did I direct message with and interact with as well, right? So it's, it's not all about just looking at the metrics. It's all about, it's also, um, analyzing what you're doing yourself. So I hope that makes sense. Like for me, I, I can look at the engagement on Facebook, but, and that's okay. That's just data. But then I have to kind of do something with that, you know, you know, like, um, or people who contact me on my, um, my, uh, website page like it's not just enough to say I've got this many visitors it's like what is the conversion part of that what what um, is the the flip side of that how many people are actually signing up to work with me or whatever so I hope that makes sense and um, but I, I would say that I you know look at that Linda and just take some time and uh, dedicate a wee bit of time towards doing that and an hour and there's lots of resources as well you know out there um, that can help you kind of figure it out, but just a little bit at a time. Um, but because it's not enough just to put a picture up on say Instagram or Pinterest, there has to be that strategy behind it. And a lot of times it can be growing the engagement by actually going out and commenting and engaging with other people's stuff as well as just your own. Okay. So kind of a little off topic, but getting, I hope that that is practical. Um, so that's what we were talking about today. Fear that we're not doing it right. Look inward and make sure that the thing is aligned to what you want to do in the first place. Two, have a plan about what you're going to do so that you know that you were in a right state of mind when you made your plan and you know that it's right. Have confidence in that. Stay the course. If you're really unsure, ask somebody who knows what they're talking about, an expert, and use the data, not the emotion, to judge your um, results. All right. So that's all I had for you today. I hope you find some value in that. As always, like I said, if you're watching the replay, use hashtag replay. Let me know your comments and feedback. And if you are a beginning or want to be entrepreneur and are thinking about making that leap into entrepreneurship, I would love to talk to you more about my group program that is launching at the beginning of October this fall it is all it is fall right now so we are going to be going through validation of your idea trying to figure out where you should be focusing on creating that plan that we're talking about here and um, giving yourself a great foundation for a business to move forward in um, that program is called idea to business it isn't open for yet open to be purchased yet but if you are interested I will put the link below that you can sign up to be on the wait list. And if you have any questions about it, just reach out to me, direct message me, give me a shout out in the comments here, and I will be happy to tell you more about it. But there'll be more of that coming soon as well. But right now, get on the wait list if you're interested because there's some extra goodies for people who are. All right, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time to chat to me today and I'll see you next week.